Bonjour, chez Courchevel. Hello and welcome to our new exciting journey. SR22 just departed IFR from Zurich. We're still on uh, IFR now on flight level 9 or 0. Uh, cruise speed is 138 knots. Uh, actually, we have a little bit of headwind, 70 knots, so the ground speed is only 142 knots. Uh, next step is we will cancel the IFR and go to a VFR flight heading direct to the mountains. The Mobla is already inside and then uh, heading direct to Kuchuel. We're now going to comment our landing at Courchevel. We are now approaching Whiskey Point, 7,500 feet. In the back you can see Maribel airfield, which is covered by snow. And from Whiskey Point we are flying to Lima Point. There is an antenna, 7,450 uh, feet, to check the q and and check the altitude. After Lima we go direct to overhead. So here you can see the beautiful runway and we check here wind conditions, traffic and also the surface of the runway. Terrain ahead. Terrain ahead. Terrain ahead. We can see beautiful weather, almost no wind and traffic. We have some helicopters and the PC-12 on the holding point, uh, but the runway is perfect, no snow and no ice on it. So after overhead, wings level, start our descent to 7000 feet and also set the flaps to the first stage. Next point will then be November, which we can see here on the left side. And before reaching November, we're turning slightly right into our base. It's very important here to have a stable aircraft and maintain altitude and speed. And on the left, we have the echo point at 7,000 feet. And after that, or quickly before that, we are going to turn right, which is right now. So you can see now on the right side already the runway. And at this point we are fully committed to land. There is no way to going around. The mountain in the back is just too high. And here we have a final speed with a cirrus of around 80 to 85 knots, depending the wind situation. And um, we are going direct into the wall. So the aiming point is before the runway in the wall. We have to fight different wind situations because the variation of the terrain. And now we are very short on final. Aiming point is right. Reducing the power and then pitch up. That's very important to protect the nose gear and as well the propeller. And then successfully landed here with the help of Martin, our flight instructor at Courchevel. Uh, we just arrived here at Courchevel. You can see the, <laughs> the ski piece literally in the back of our beautiful SR22. Um, we have been here before in summer 21. Unfortunately, the rating is only valid for six months. So Martin, we just arrived. Later we will go for a, for a lunch in the famous Pilatus restaurant. Maybe you can introduce yourself a little bit. You have a very, very interesting aviation background. Yeah, my name is Martin Gauci. I'm a MI, mountain instructor, since 1987. Uh, I've been here quite often with uh, many different airplane types. The last couple of years often with my tail dragger Jodel airplanes and with this SR-22. 
It's a quite demanding airport in nice weather conditions. It's, uh, I would say, it's easy. Like today. <laughs> like today. Only no wind. <laughs> but uh, you need an introduction and you really have to get used to this special view uh, you have if you approach a runway at 6,500 feet, I mean almost 2,000 meters above sea level, compromising your performance and the view approaching a steep uphill runway, it's 18.66% that that's steeper than most of us are able to climb on a bicycle. The world looks completely different during the approach to such a runway. Yeah, and especially with this aircraft, because I'm used to the Cessna 172 flying here. Uh, the approach speed was, or final speed was around 65, and here we are flying with 85, so it's going very quick. Yeah, it was quite challenging. We have done uh, five landings here, and uh, I still need some training, to be honest, to, to, to the aircraft and to the, to the airport. Maybe what, what you're doing if you're not flying on the mountains, if you're not flying with the SR-22 to Courchevel? I'm flying since uh, 1979, 43 years. My main job is I'm uh, captain on Airbus 340 for the best Swiss leisure airline, <laughs> Edelweiss Air. Uh, unfortunately, they don't use me a lot right now. I have two to three flights a month, yeah. giving me quite some time to share my experience with people like you. Yeah, that's very nice, very cool experience. And a little bit more about the SR22 you have here. It's a G3, right, with turbo? Yeah, it's uh, called SR22 TN. Yeah. TN stands for Turbo Normalized. It has two turbochargers, two intercoolers, a wastegate system, keeping the manifold pressure all the time at 29.92 inch manifold pressure. That means the engine thinks it's always at sea level. And we can keep this 29.92 inch manifold pressure up to 25,000 feet. Oh. And we bought this airplane 2008, brand new. It has now 4,000 hours. Soon the third engine is coming. Just have to wait to the Cessna departing here. By the way, I'm feeling com considerably better taking off in this airplane here than he in his Cessna. Yeah. <laughs> he has no plan B. All produced Cirrus SR20s and SR22s have. We have this CAPS Cirrus airframe parachute system. It's a built-in parachute, 22 meters diameter. If you activate this system above 500 feet AGL and at the speed lower than 137 knots indicated airspeed, it almost guarantees you that the aircraft will land on the parachute and uh, you can walk away. If we lose the engine after the takeoff here, you will pull the parachute. Here we are already quickly 500 feet above AGL yeah. because steeply yeah, falling sure, ter yeah. terrain. Uh, here the parachute would be an option. On the other side, a well-maintained engine and as long as you have fuel in your airplane, the chances to, to experience an engine problem or an engine failure are, I would say, they are quite low. I've spent more than 30,000 hours in airplanes, more than 7,500 in piston airplanes, a lot of them in twin engines, so you have twice the chance for an engine problem and uh, I can say I never experienced a real problem. you also flying the SF-50, so the Vision Jet. Um, would you think it's a good idea to also go to Courchevel with the, with, the, with the jet? The airport authority has forbidden any jet operation here. I would say it makes sense. Okay. Of course, the takeoff here works with any airplane, even if the aircraft is not aerodynamically flying off the takeoff, it will fly ballistically. <laughs> and as the terrain is uh, steeply falling, most probably you will reach a speed the aircraft will fly at. These are evil knievel operations. I would say that's nothing for me. Is there still anything on your bucket list? Because you have done a lot of things. You told us uh, you have done a lot of ferry flights. You picked up actually this aircraft from the US, bring, brought it to the, through Switzerland. Uh, anything on the bucket list you want to experience in aviation? A white spot is uh, water flying. I'm allowed to fly uh, float airplanes. Yeah. I did this float rating once in the United States, yeah. but uh, no experience at all. I have a friend, he is flying uh, every September in Canada on a, on a beaver with a piston engine. Yeah. Uh, if I look at his movies, <laughs> fishing, uh, the lifestyle in such Very an airplane cool. for, a, let's say for two or three weeks, yeah. to get a good introduction with a capable instructor, that's something I will do sooner or later. So it uh, was very nice flying with you here and uh, exploring from your experience. And uh, now let's go for a lunch and then uh, let's fly back to Zurich.
as spectacular as the landing is the takeoff here in Courcheval. So you only can see a few meters of the first part of the runway. Full brakes, full power, checking all the instruments and when it's green, release the brakes. The runway is only 537 meters long or 1761 feet and the slope is 18.66%. So at this point, it feels like on a roller coaster going down the runway with this slope, gaining as much speed as possible, and then start to pull it up slightly. And we are airborne. That's a crazy feeling. Then we are fighting for speed for sure, and as well for the positive climb rate. And with the S22, it's going very quickly and after a stable climb we're turning slightly left to avoid the noise and takeoff is done. What a great feeling. Thank you very much, I uh, hope you enjoyed as well the video and don't forget to like and subscribe our channel.